Keepers must carry out daily duties routinely alongside keeping accurate records of animals' health in order to maintain zoo welfare standards. In order to do so, keepers must keep animals' enclosures clean, germ-free and safely secured, prepare food correctly according to dietary needs and how certain animals receive their food and how frequently they receive it. Preparing foods such as pellet feed, fresh meats and administering medication at feeding times when required, also providing a fresh source of water. Observing and interacting with animals to check for any signs of ill health or distress. Design enrichment activities for animals to maintain physical and mental health, assist in new designs for enclosures to replicate natural habitat. And also educating visitors. Records must be kept to maintain welfare standards by using medication records, breeding records, feeding records and cleaning records. Records can be maintained by utilising ZIMS, the zoological information management software which was developed in 1973 to advance global collaboration and online information sharing between animal care professions, share medical and biological information such as birth, sex and death. Welfare standards can be assessed, revealing either good or poor levels of care. Indicators of improper welfare standards that can be observed are Behavioural changes can be exhibited from the animal, also known as uncharacteristic behaviours. Pacing can be seen within the enclosure. Hair loss from excessive grooming. Self-mutilation, vomiting, aggression and pica. Improper enclosure size, such as the length and width of the enclosure materials should be correct in order for the animals to display characteristic behaviours freely. The height of the enclosure should also be correct to provide security around the enclosure from both public and an animal. Knowledge of grouping sizes should also be known and species grouping within their enclosure. Indicators of good welfare standards can be seen, such as animals showing characteristic behaviours, socialising in groups, playing with enrichment and having no health issues. Meerkats in their natural environment will feed on insects, larvae, millipedes and mealworms, also scorpions, snakes, spiders and fungi, and small mammals on occasion. Their water source mainly comes from the food that they consume as it has a high water content. Meerkats spend a significant amount of time foraging for their food, mostly during the day. As meerkats are diurnal, they forage during the day rather than at night. Meerkats within captivity spend less time foraging than those in an in-situ environment as the food is readily available. Meerkats in captivity are fed mealworms, eggs, chicks, corn, whole squash, insects such as live crickets, avocado, cat food and cereals. Taurine has been determined to be a necessary component of the diet of a meerkat. Lack of taurine may result in large hearts and related complications. Diets should contain a form of cat food and mice which is high in taurine or dietary supplements. Scatter feeding allows meerkats to forage for their food as they would do in their natural habitat in the wild. This encourages characteristic behaviours and allows sharing of food, showing natural competition and dominance when feeding. Scatter feeding can create risks as it may attract other species such as rodents. It can also become an issue when lower pack members are not receiving enough food due to dominance within the pack. Meerkats in captivity will use their enrichment such as logs and termite mounds to hide their food from other pack members in order to retrieve them later. This increases handling times, making it more enjoyable for the meerkats. Whole fruit and vegetables are given to the meerkats as they have to work together to retrieve the food. Hiding food within the enclosure allows for foraging and digging. This will stimulate the meerkats' cognitive ability as they have to work for their food. 
Also, providing a food source with fur will give a natural diet and replicate natural feeding behaviours, as they would eat small mammals in the wild. Meerkats are also fed expired chicks, by doing so replicates their natural behaviour of hunting and feeding on small mammals in the wild. The chicks are thrown in their enclosure and the meerkats are left to pierce through the skin of the chicks in order to feed on their flesh. This is done so by the meerkat's sharp teeth. By leaving the feathers attached to the chick's body, the meerkats are experiencing a more natural feed and texture. Kongs may also be used to increase feeding time. By hiding insects such as mealworms within the kong, it will take longer for them to retrieve. This may replicate meerkats in the wild trying to capture insects or scorpions. Goats will refuse to eat when under stress. They will isolate themselves when stressed. They need to be kept in groups. Self-suckling. Female goats will suck on their own teats when pregnant and abort late in pregnancy. When female goats abort, they will be given medication and companionship. Goats will display dominance and fight when other members are introduced into their group. Goats will be destructive of their environment and enrichment when no suitable enrichment is provided or due to lack of stimulus, chewing and digging will occur. Aggression and butting when new goats are introduced if not done correctly. Hand rearing is done so when the parent may begin to neglect their offspring which will lead to death or suffering without appropriate attention. Hand rearing can have negative implications as survival skills and behaviours are learnt throughout this period. Infants being hand-reared will become attached to the person in which is hand-rearing them and associate them as a motherly figure. Hand-rearing animals may struggle to rear and care for their own young as they will not have the knowledge and survival skills to know how to feed their young as they hadn't experienced it naturally. They may develop uncharacteristic behaviour such as lack of fear to humans, which may become an issue when introduced to members of their own species in an in-situ or ex-situ environment. Uncharacteristically interacting with others of its species, this can generate social issues as they are used to human contact. The mother may become fertile again very quickly and re-enter estrus, as her offspring is no longer present. This is also known as double clutching. Hand rearing causes disruption of mother to infant bond and causes behavioural incompetence when mature affecting social interactions due to imprinting of human interactions. Using my math skills I had learnt within class, I had been able to transfer my observations into data. This is shown in the next scene, displaying the before and after ethograms of the meerkat's behaviours and averages before and after their enrichment. Percentages for before and after the enrichment Behaviours before and after the presence of the enrichment within the enclosure shall change, either increasing or decreasing. My prediction is that activity post-enrichment will either increase or decrease. I expect the meerkats to increase activities such as aggression and dominance, increase scent marking, whilst activities such as scent trait and foraging will significantly decrease. 
Also activities such as aggression and dominance and increased scent marking will be high after a period of time when interest has been lost, other activities will start to become active again, such as foraging. I had expected that foraging would increase after the enrichment was added, but I had been proven wrong as foraging decreased. My suggestion as to why this occurred would be that the food was readily available for them coming out of the bottles when turning them rather than the meerkats having to dig within the sand for their food that had increased and decreased. Eating welfare sheets throughout my time at Camperdown, I have noticed that all areas of welfare are provided, such as shelter in the form of a hut for the meerkats and having correct substrate. This can be seen in my welfare sheet. Enrichment helped utilise the meerkat's cognitive, physical and sensory abilities by using the materials we used and the size of the enrichment and the food within the bottles such as meerkat feed, straw, grapes, mealworms and dubia worms. By squashing the grapes we used the grape juice to allow the meerkats to use their senses. As you can see from the clip, the meerkats are using their sharp claws and their great sense of smell to navigate the food.
I'd like to give a massive thank you to Dundee and Angus College and the lecturers on the course. Also, Camperdown Wildlife Centre for giving me this opportunity. It has been amazing. I hope you enjoyed.